I know that the First Minister asserts that I have to prove a case. I don't. That has already been done. There have been two court cases, two judges, one jury. In this inquiry, it's the Scottish Government, a government which has already admitted to behaving unlawfully, who are under examination. Secondly, my interest in assisting this inquiry is out of respect for our Parliament. I have made no personal public comment on these matters of any kind for 11 months, not a single television interview or press interview or statement. I have turned down hundreds of such offers, which as committee members will know has not hitherto been my normal policy. I have watched with growing frustration over the last six months while this committee has been systematically deprived of the evidence it has legitimately sought. Indeed, I'm just about your only witness who has been actively trying to present you with evidence as opposed to withholding it. As we saw this week, even after it is published, it is then unpublished by intervention of a Crown Office who should not be questioning the will of Parliament. I watched an astonishment on Wednesday when the First Minister of Scotland, the First Minister of Scotland, used a COVID press conference, a COVID press conference, to effectively question the result of a jury. Still, I said nothing. Well, today, that changes. I have no incentive or advantage in revisiting the heart and shock of the last three years from a personal perspective, or indeed from the perspective of two complainants failed by the government and then forced directly against their express wishes into a criminal process. This now admitted action neither served the wishes of the complainants nor the interests of justice. For two years and six months, this has been a nightmare. In fact, I have every desire to move on, to turn the page, to resist talking yet again about a series of events which have been amongst the most wounding that any person can face. But the reason I'm here today is because we can't turn that page nor move on until the decision-making which is undermining the system of government in Scotland is addressed. The competence and professionalism of the civil service matters. The independence of the Crown Office as acting in the public interest matters. Acting in accordance with legal advice matters. Concealing evidence from the courts matters. The duty of candour of public authorities matters. Democratic accountability through Parliament matters. Suppressing evidence from parliamentary committees matters. And yes, ministers telling the truth to Parliament matters. The day such things come to not matter would be a dark and dangerous one for Scotland. Collectively, these events shine a light <clears throat> on a government whose actions are no longer true to the principles of openness, accountability and transparency which are the core principles on which this Scottish Parliament was founded. I remember I was there. The failures of leadership are many and obvious, and yet, convener, not a single person has taken responsibility, not a single resignation, not a single sacking, not even an admonition. Instead, we have promotions or extensions of contracts and self-serving defences. The government acted illegally but somehow nobody's to blame. Delay and obstruction in making evidence available. A committee has been asked to do its job with both hands tied behind its back and a blindfold on. Witness after witness later adjusting evidence delivered under oath. Were it not for the independence of the judiciary, the robust scrutiny of the court of session and the common sense of a jury made up of members of the public, the matters before this committee would never have come to light and indeed no one would have cared about this inquiry. The Scottish courts emerged from these events with a reputation enhanced. Can those leading the government and the Crown Office say the same? Some people say that the <coughs> failures of these institutions, the blurring of the boundaries between party, government and prosecution service, mean that Scotland is in danger of becoming a failed state. I disagree. The Scottish civil servant hasn't failed. Its leadership has failed. The Crown Office hasn't failed. Its leadership has failed. Scotland hasn't failed. Its leadership has failed.
Thank you.